Okay. We hope you've enjoyed so far, and we've been a little bit uppy and a little bit emotional. We've had a little bit of everything, and this was just a warm-up, so get ready. Are you ready for the plenary sessions? Imagine the light bearer, a personification of the morning star, as a male figure bearing a torch. For old Greeks and Romans, such was the role of Lucifer. Later in Christian tradition, it did not really end well for him, as we know. However, our first speaker has a hell of a lot to say about torches and light. Welcome a light designer, thought leader, and passionate entrepreneur, Jose Manuel Dos Santos, head of design and user experience at Philips Lightning. Morning. Um, wow, what an introduction. Um, uh, first of all, thank you um, for the folks that had the either bright idea or nutty idea to invite me to join you. Um, this is a topic that I am very focused on and I've been working with in some sort of way. But I'd like to start by, in a certain way, in a certain uh, provocative way. So this kind of makes me, it, it makes it very easy for me because you're all specialists and I'm not. So I can come in here and say a bunch of things uh, from my own perspective, which is what I promised the, the folks that invited me to be here. Which is I can only come and talk to you about my own perspective and my only relationship with anthropologists. But indeed, this is my starting point. Um, so maybe you wonder, so who's this guy? And I'll do a very quick um, uh, tour. I, I am a trained industrial designer, and for many years, for about 20 uh, years, I did what I call my consultancy uh, small-scale uh, career in Portugal and Spain with different uh, types of, uh, let's say, companies, and uh, um, some of them my own companies, some of consultancies that I worked with other people. And then um, about 10 years ago, I said I wanted to try what I now consider my corporate stage of life, a large scale, and I moved to the United States, where I've been since then. Um, first, it was a large corporation in, with, um, let's say, uh, indoor uh, interior design components. And then I now work for what I typically call a 129-year-old $7 billion startup. Uh, which is uh, Philips Lighting uh, is a brand that uh, we uh, used to be known as. We have changed our brand name, our global brand name to Signify, which is uh, a great opportunity to explain to people what um, Signify is, but also what is the meaning of light and what are all the things that we can do with lighting. So um, I am not a lighting designer, and actually in the United States, I typically uh, explain that I'm not an a lighting designer and I do not employ lighting designers because we work with and for lighting designers. Now that's already an interesting approach from an understanding of context that I can get into more detail when you want me to. But basically, this is the perspective that I bring into this. And I could now go into, as people typically do, as a designer does, into show portfolio. But instead of that, I show people because this is basically what I have left from all these years and all those interactions. This is when I said goodbye to my first company. There might be some of my friends from that age somewhere sitting. If you do recognize yourself, you'll laugh. Um, and then this is another group of people. There's actually people that are much younger than me in this picture that have disappeared, that have died, which is always a nice way to also mark the way you've gone through life. And this is when you say goodbye to people and you have a beach that you can go and say goodbye <laughs> in your underwear. So it's, it's another uh, good way to remember things. Um, and this is when you start going to events with very different groups of people. And this was probably photographed of somewhere that looks very much like this. And this is a group of people that I started a company with. And sometimes not everything goes well. And so that is also part of the why you grow and part of the lessons you learn. And this is my team, my first team in the US, and this is now my present team 
This, in the end, beats any portfolio. Trust me. When it gets to the end, I do have portfolio and pieces spread around the world, but it's the relationships and the people that I've met with and the people that I was you know, fortunate enough to work with and to help get to where they're going. And of course, I'm also a father, and I'm also very proud of the journey that I've gone through with my children. So I started with a kind of a, a, a hunch. And my hunch was that maybe uh, anthropology had an issue that it, maybe a lot of people didn't know what anthropology was. But instead of just trusting my hunch, what I did is I went around my building to 10 different people and I asked them three unaided questions, which is always frightening. And I filmed them. So again, I did a little bit of homework. And I'd like to show that to you. Could somebody please turn the volume on? O som está a sair. Tenho que tirar, mas antes eu experimentei e funcionava. Ups. Um, okay. um, Tenho que tirar o gado em mim? Não. The plug is so. Desculpem. Uh, sorry. One. Uh, one. One. Portanto, aqui. Aqui. Aqui, tiro isto. Não foi isso, não. Ok, feito. Bang. E. My name is Niels van Duinen, and I work for Signify on building our ecosystem partner network. Very cool. First question What do you know about anthropology? and what anthropologists do. Anthropology for me is the science of societies, um, studying uh, past and present of people in societies, their culture, their religions, their belief and their practices. Very cool. Um, have you ever worked with an anthropologist? I don't think I've ever worked with an anthropologist. Okay. Last question. What would be, in your opinion, a good reason for a company like us to ever engage an anthropologist? Can you repeat that question? What would be, in your opinion, a good reason for a company like ours to ever engage an anthropologist? Oh, if any. There are many good reasons. It will help us to uh, build and improve the culture of our organization, allowing people to work better together because they know where they come from, uh, who they are, and they know about the other people, where they come from, who they are and how they work. So it will help us to leverage the strength of the people with different origins, uh, from coming from different cultures, so it will make the organization way more effective. By the way, Thank Niels you. is a poet, okay? I'm Andrew Mahoney, I'm a UX designer with Signify. First question, what do you know about anthropology and what anthropologists do? Um, I know it in the context of research and um, understanding people and societies and how people behave. Okay. Uh, have you ever worked with an anthropologist? I don't think I've ever formally worked with one. Probably um, no one that's identified themselves as one. Okay, and as an opinion, uh, what uh, would you think it's, would be a good reason for a company like us to engage an anthropologist, if any? Um, uh, we have very close ties to user research and understanding people, so I would assume that uh, even going deeper into broader you know, behaviors of people and where that's going in the future would be probably a wise place to explore. Cool, thank you. And your name is? My name is Doreen Meniccia, and uh, I am passionate about lighting and lighting systems and making the world a better place for connected lighting. 
Ouch. Okay, very good. Three questions, my dear. First, what do you know about anthropology or what do anthropologists do? Uh, anthropology, the study of man or humankind, that is. I know a little bit about ectomorphs and endomorphs, and human body forms and things like that. Okay. How much should we discuss? Uh, I'm an endomorph, question. I believe. I know, endomorph is a good uh, place to be. Um, second question, have you ever worked with an anthropologist? No. Third question, what would you think for Signify would be a good reason to engage an anthropologist? To create scenarios about the future of humankind and where we're going, where we think we'll be, and what we'll be like as a race and uh, on the planet in a hundred years. That is fantastic. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Uh, hi, I'm Emery. I'm a product manager responsible for uh, Grace and Birth Family. Fantastic. Emre, first question. What do you know about anthropology or what anthropologists do? Uh, not much, to be frank. Okay. Hi, John. Hi, my name is John Park. I'm an industrial designer at Signify. Cool. First question. Mm -hmm. What do you know about anthropology and what anthropologists do? To be honest, I do not know much. Um, I believe they study uh, the past in a sense that they try to learn uh, the culture, the technology, the things that that defines us today, okay. but by by means of tracing it back. Um, okay. But to be honest, I don't know a good definition of it. That was a good try. Sure. I'm Jonathan Hardy. I'm an industrial designer working for Signify Design Studio in Burlington, Mass. Cool. First question. What do you know about anthropology and what anthropologists do? Hmm. I, I know that it's about the study of uh, the culture of society uh, through the history. Uh, that's what I recall from my um, study in anthropology. I did one course at the college. So. <laughs> okay, so at least you went through there. Yeah. Okay. Um, did you ever, have you ever, ever worked with an anthropologist? Mm, no, I, I never did. Okay. And if you had to uh, suggest, what would be, in your opinion, a good reason, if there was any, for our company, for Signify, to engage an anthropologist? Do you have any idea? Why would we do it? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, when we're working with um, the customer, our end customer, so people being influenced by the, the light and the product we uh, uh, creating I mean these people are part of a society they are part of a country a culture and these systems are complex to understand so having uh, some sort of an expert in that domain I think would bring another vision within uh, our group and could uh, maybe help us to uncover insight that we are not um, it, it might not be easy for us to to see or understand uh, without having that kind of background and knowledge so. Very cool. My name is Jessica Morin. I'm a product architect and LED specialist at Philips Lighting, Signify. And I'm also a passionate triathlete, Ironman finisher. Ha! Now that's an intro. My <laughs> dear first question. What do you know about anthropology and what anthropologists do? Not so much. Uh, anthropology is the science of studying people or groups of people, different cultures. Uh, in my vision, anthropologists, they just travel the world to go find some tribes in the Amazon or some you know, forgotten um, civilizations and looking at their traditions and the way they live and interact. You probably know more than many other people that said that they know, but uh, here you go. Have you ever worked with an anthropologist? Never. Third and last question, in your opinion, what would be a good reason for a company like us, like Signify, to hire an anthropologist, if any? 
I can see there is some potential because we are developing more and more human centric technologies and people who know different habits of different civilizations, how it changed over time is very good for studying behaviors of what is the primary human nature and what we need. So I think that would be interesting to consult with anthropologists to learn about what the human, what the people deeply need for the lighting of the future or any technology of the future, acoustics, landscapes, environment, whatever we could do to help them and maybe to respond to some needs that people don't not, they don't even know they have it. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Jin Yu. I'm a research scientist for Sign Signify North America Research. Very good, thank you. First question, what do you know about anthropology or what anthropologists do? Uh, I have very rough knowledge about that part. I have a friend who actually got a PhD in that. But uh, what I know, she uh, travels a lot to uh, the, the Asian uh, place, like uh, Iraq and other places to collect some data, doing some analysis. That, that's basically what I know. Okay. Second question is, if you have ever worked with an anthropologist no. directly. Okay. And with the, let's say, limited knowledge that you think you have, which, you know, knowing you, I think you know more than a lot of other people, but okay. But what would you say would be a good reason for a company like Signify to ever hire a, an anthropologist? You mean a like good reason? Yeah, a good reason. <laughs> and it, it, the answer might be none. It's okay. Well, it's, uh, it will be hard to link anthropology to Signify. Because, uh, yeah, because lighting is not uh, that uh, old history yet. <laughs> okay. But it might, uh, we might have a person uh, on the site which can help us to maybe make some uh, like logical linking uh, from the history study to guide the company to the right place. Connecting the past to the future. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> Hi, I'm Meg Smith. I'm a uh, applications lighting researcher in Cambridge, Massachusetts for Signify Research. Uh, my uh, area of expertise is IoT applications, um, specifically in workplace. Fantastic. Thank you, Meg. You're welcome. First question. What do you know about anthropology or what anthropo anthropologists do? Anthropology, I believe, would be defined as the science about people, and they look at uh, culture and uh, human beings interacting with one another, something like that. Um, a long time ago, I had a friend who was a social anthropologist who worked uh, within urban populations to see how they corresponded to uh, other, other research they had gone before. So my second question, I believe I might have an answer. Have you ever worked with an anthropologist? Which is not the same thing as having a friend, but okay. No, no I've never worked professionally, but it seems to go hand in hand with the work that we're doing. So that was my third question, geez, and <laughs> I did not tell you the questions before. What would be, in your opinion, a good reason for a company like ours to engage an anthropologist? Well, as we're investing in um, exploring the ways that light affects people, not just their visual system, but, but the way they think and the way they act and their moods and their behaviors. Um, we need to understand a lot more about human beings and their moods, their behaviors, the way they think. Thank you. You're welcome. So I decided, I decided to do this for two reasons. First, because I needed to confirm my hunch and second, I needed to understand if there was hope. I do believe there is hope. No matter the data that comes out of this, this is a very small sample, but for people who are honest enough or humble, these all, I consider them very smart people. But they said they didn't know. Three people kind of, you know, kind of what I called, you know, they went through it and tried to give their best answer. Three people had a very good understanding, and from the 10, none of them ever worked with an anthropologist. So, Maybe we do have a problem, maybe not, but I assure you, you're not the only ones, anthropologists, to have that problem. A lot of it is because of this. 
which by the way, I am not going to attempt to clear because I, I, I believe that design lives in this same thing where a lot of different names, a lot of different areas of design. There's some people that say that it's important that this was defined. There's some people that say that no, this is the richness of the profession. I don't know. Um, one thing is for sure, part of the problem might be this and it needs to be addressed. It doesn't need to become something that you focus your whole activity on. Uh, for us, and uh, this paper actually um, uh, written by Melissa and uh, co-authored uh, co by Jill Lawrence, uh, is the focus of what I typically look at when it comes to anthropology in these three arenas, which is things the corporation make, the way they make it, and then organization imperati imperatives, which in this case are very much connected to our human-centric kind of focus. Um, if you're curious about this, uh, I'm, I'm sure there will be uh, sharing and you will know how to get access to this paper. Probably everybody here knows this paper. So, um, but this is, I'm not going to read through this, just saying that there's still a lot of individual actors that are very much important in corporate life. And so a lot of it is very much about that individuality. And also, unfortunately or not, but they seem to think that um, all of this about understanding social and cultural um, uh, environment, that it's a, a nice thing to have, that it's not a, an important or a core, a central activity that should be done by organizations. It's an interesting paper. It tracks some of the things that have happened, and it also tracks how it has evolved. Um, so, hey. How many people here, so maybe anthropology is a fat, maybe it isn't, um, maybe it's good. Um, how many of you, may I see a show of hands that have bought this book from Jan Chipchis? Okay, so another one here. So here's a gentleman that all his life in one way or another, depending on who looks at him, might uh, consider to have been doing anthropology. He goes to Kickstarter, he says he wants to raise 20,000 bucks to write a book. And he gets three hundred and thirty-six thousand um, dollars, and and I was one of them, and I have this beautiful book. Uh, I don't use it as much as I would like, and I wonder if the one thousand seven hundred and sixty-six backers are out there doing field research and applied anthropology, or if it's just a beautiful book to own, which is still okay. But uh, for me, at least, this is a very big reason why I bought the book because it's a beautiful monument to this gentleman's life and work. Um, I'd like to go quickly through something that in our corporation is an extension of understanding people, which is the part of the collaboration which we call co-creation. So, you know, through co-creation we facilitate human-centered innovation. Um, and by doing this, what we do is we try to understand people in their context, and you might be understanding ah, 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 anthropology. Um, we try to sharply articulate what people value, and it needs to be done through special lenses, transform insights into concepts, and then build and test these concepts. Some people might call this the design thinking process, some people might call these different things, but I believe um, this is very much uh, similar in many different places. And so for us, it's about connecting the dots, embracing different ways of thinking, and then the cross-disciplinary collaboration. And a lot of this, some people might say, where does anthropology come in all this? Beyond the having a voice, a lens, an understanding in the room that we always try to bring in, the reality is a lot of the discover um, needs to be much more human-centered than necessarily just finding out the competition or finding out who's doing what. And that is one part that sometimes it's hard because you don't do the right work before so that you can have that result when you're going through it. Um, I'm sure you were aware there's also new things that are coming through that, as many other cases, there are threats, but there are also ways for you to think about it. We use a platform called Battery, or Battery, like some people like to call it. It basically allows for me, for us, to send everybody in the organization into missions. Um, and those missions have specific objectives that they go out through. Um, it, 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 it turns them into some sort of ethnographers or uh, anthropologists, commercial at least, or business um, with whatever they, they can do out of it. And then what the tool is providing is algorithms that allows the system and the platform to recognize 
a lot of what is being photographed, scanned, and inputted. Now, this is a very subtle way of bringing AI into this discussion. Uh, it is not, um, let's say, it's not killing the work that people have to do in it, but it is bringing a layer, and that layer is, like in many other cases, it's a threat and it's also an opportunity. <laughs> is that for me to go? Uh, that's, that's, okay. Um, so, I, I also did something, and um, I'm not going to share here because there are long interviews that I can make available to anybody that reaches out to me. Jill Lawrence is a, uh, uh, she is an anthropologist working uh, in a large company in the US uh, called um, Crown. I'm just going to put a very, uh, her introducing herself, which is as simple as that, and then share a little bit of, um, my name is Jill Lawrence. Uh, I'm the Director of Design Research for Crown Equipment. We are a uh, sort of fully in-staff in design organization. My team is the research team, um, but at Crown, everyone does research. The designers do research, the engineers do research. Um, so we really help augment that by taking on some of our own projects and also by coaching and bringing tools and methods to the rest of product development. So this is Jill. Um, like I said, if you're curious about hearing your 45 minute interview, please reach out to me. And I'd just like to share a few things and I'm not gonna read through all of it. But the conversation was very much about the role of, of her as an anthropologist and her team, about the need to have some sort of taxonomy that every time that she has a new project or a new relationship, that it becomes sometimes complicated for her to get into in there without that taxonomy about the uncertainty that in a lot of situations they are drawn into beyond people research. It's about people just getting to them and saying, how can we you know, help us figure this out? Um, a lot of conversations about positioning. Um, you know, this thing about specialization versus being hybrids and what exactly do you gain and do you lose from that? Career, you know, what she looks for when she's looking for anthropologists and what is the type of things that she's looking for. The fact that we need to all think and, uh, and um, be into systems, the biases uh, that I'm sure everybody deals with and you do with um, um, as you do your own work. And then the fact that, which I like this one, that the fact that many times we're trying to preach but we don't, uh, we don't follow what we preach, we do not bring that empathy that we like to talk so much about into our own corporations. And she ended up with this uh, question that I, dis uh, that I promised her I would ask you. So take note and please do uh, tell me uh, the answer so I can report back to Jill. And then Sarah Drury works for me, works for us as my people researcher. I'm going to let her also uh, quickly introdu introduce herself. I also have a long interview with her if you are so interested. My training starts with cognitive neuroscience um, cognitive science, which is uh, very much like me in that it is uh, an amalgamation of different subjects, all relating to how the human mind works. Um, so I did a lot of research into the way we behave and the environments around us and how those influence how we behave. Um, I also was fascinated by linguistics, so I blended that into my studies. Um, and then uh, my, my master's was in innovation and management, and it was where I first got into this whole concept of um, design research and people to people research. I didn't even know this kind of career existed until I met a researcher in person and, I, and she was telling me about how she would go into um, people's homes and study how they behaved in their home and how they felt about music and how it played a role in their home. And I was like, who are you and how did you get that job? <laughs> Sounded like the coolest thing in, in the world to me. So um, I started talking to her. She, she opened up my eyes to the different opportunities out there. And, um, and so I saw there was an opening that didn't apply for this sort of work and I went for it. So Sarah is, is her base is not on anthropology. She's, like you said, she's a cognitive, um, um, she comes from the cognitive research area. Um, one of the things I did after five months of Sarah inside, I asked her 
you know, how's it going? And she kind of mapped it out in the first five months, the different challenges that she was going through. And some of them are really interesting because some of them are very basic, of course, at the beginning, you know, what is people research? She was honest enough to say that she'd never heard the term before, and even though I explained to her why I called it people research, she still thinks I'm the only guy that does it, but okay. Um, from that to understanding the organization and different things. And then I also asked her, okay, so how's it working, you know, in terms of expectations and reality? And she mapped it out, a number of things. Of course, the obvious one is she started working for a company and now she works for another. Um, and then the things that she thought that she was going to be doing versus what she's really getting. And this is interesting because um, it's not either good or bad, it's just part of going into a corporation with a certain uh, out, you know, viewpoint and then actually having to get there and dealing with the reality of corporations. I also asked her, and I'm going to um, uh, just uh, stay in the slide for a few seconds because I asked her, you know, so what do you think now after five months, and she now is a full-term, uh, full-time employee, what do you think that, you know, that is the anatomy of a people research? And so she basically, she mapped it out in terms of what that person is, what they can do, the typical methods that they're using, how do they represent findings, and the different people that they need to work with. Now, Sandra is a, it's a, she's a young woman, incredibly smart, um, active, and I do realize that I'm asking a lot from her, but at the end, I do think that she is capable. So, because I'm a nice guy, I gave her this mission, which, you know, after I wrote it myself, I looked at it and I said, you know, who are you kidding? How can you ask this of anybody? But hey, uh, here we are. People say you need to put out a very lofty vision and throw people into, into the best possible thing that they can be. And this is what I've asked Sarah Dury to be inside my organization. And uh, of course, I, I ended up with simple, right? Because I'm, I'm aware that it's not simple at all. Um, so the real for me, and this is my last uh, thing, it's just a very simple thing that John Kokel just said in one of his posts, which is that the user is just not like me. And even though I do know a lot of people that may look like me, may sound like me, and may even be industrial designers, this or that, or consumers, but in reality, the user is not like me, is not like any of us, and so if there is a good reason why the world needs anthropologists, it's because everybody should adopt this motto. Thank you.